Hello, this is Ryan here, and as many of you know, we are on a break from our Babylon 5 journey, and in the interim, we are going to be releasing some episodes from our Patreon. Yes, our Patreon, we have much content over there, so if you're wanting to hear more stuff like this, come on over. So what you are going to be getting are some thoughts on, and first off is our thoughts on Quantum Leap. This episode came out uh, a while back now, so you're going to be hearing some uh, comments and thoughts that have aged like a fine wine. So, enjoy. Gosh, it's, it's a shame he had to drive a kid like Philip out of the service. Yeah, I know. Wait a second. Don't you the guy who said the military is no place... What's going on? I was, I was wrong. I was wrong. All right. I was, you were right. I was wrong. What made you change your mind? Uh, you, the coach, Philip, mostly Philip. So I realized that uh, I was wrong. I'm not always right. Hi, Ryan. Hey, Rachel. How are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing very well. I'm here talking to you. And isn't that enough of a reason for people to pay me? (laughs) I'm here talking to my wife talking about something or other for some money if you're listening to this yeah. uh, in some way thank shape or form for thank i was too excited to know her say thanks or thank you so thank would suffice for now okay rachel yeah. we're giving our thoughts on something mm-hmm. what are we doing we're giving our thoughts on quantum leap <laughs> quantum leap yeah. so let's do the rundown What's Quantum Leap for those who are not familiar and or just your interpretation of the show? Quantum Leap is a sci-fi television series uh, where the main character, Sam Beckett, uh, is time traveling. But the way that he time travels is to quantum leap from one person to another in which their soul enters his body in the future mm. and he his essence enters theirs in the past and he is trying he's setting right what once went wrong and trying to leap home hoping that the this will be the leap home the interesting wrinkle, of course, to all of this is so much nuance, but of course, he can only time travel within his own lifetime. Mm-hmm. Can't go forward, can't go too back. Of course, there are rules to the, there, there are exceptions to the rules when it comes to that, but Quantum Leap, Scott Bakula being a charming boy. What is our history and relationship with this show? I adore it. Of course. Um, I've watched through it twice now, mm-hmm. and I only heard of it because of you and watched it because of you. So when we watched it together, mm-hmm. were you completely unfamiliar with like with the show? Like when yeah. we started watching it, there was nothing that kind of like, you were like, ah, oh, so this Absolutely is what this is. Absolutely nothing. Not even Scott Bakula? No. Wow, you went through your life, let's say 20-something years, without knowing Scott. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I'm glad I came along, because you would have walked through your life as an automaton not knowing who Scott Bakula is. So, oh, I- complete unfamiliarity with yeah. anything from Quantum Leap. Fair enough. This is a show that, although great... It's a sleuther. It's... It's like it just it's just there and it's a little bit of a cult classic but not everybody It was a popular it. show it got some award claims but it is one of those ones where its cultural landmark isn't as pronounced as some of the other things we've talked about on this show uh and on you know with Star Trek and so on and so forth this one is people know people may know it but it, it's it's identifying signature marks such as the t- way it time travels and the ho boy and Al and all that may not have hit the pop culture sphere as broadly as other things we've talked about. So I 
have been watching this show oh since my teenage years it was running on tv uh repeats obviously and i just caught an episode of it and i and i was intrigued i i didn't know what the pitch was i just saw an episode and i was like oh okay and the title tells you the pitch yes it does it does do a good Which job is, of that don't and you miss when tv shows did that to clarify this show ran from the late 80s to the early 90s yeah yeah one five seasons yeah so i did not see the first episode until much later so the the setup of it was kind of gone for me in that way but the first episode i saw was one where sam had leapt into an elderly old man who was just abducted by aliens or had seen an a like he's like looking up at the sky and there's yeah. a ufo and he has to convince people that he's not crazy mm. uh and i was like oh, okay and you're watching that and it kind of unfolds the the mystery of it all and like what the pitch is and who's al and all this like a good tv show back in those days mm. It's episodic. There are story art, uh, story and character things that do transfer over the series, but it is one of those shows where you can just enter really yeah. at any point. There are, of course, a few episodes that aren't like that, or a few that don't hit as hard without the context. But mm-hmm. for the most part, you can just enter in midway through season four and be like, okay, I'm on board. And yeah. that's one of the things I've always loved about this and show. It really does a good job at bringing you in at any of those points mm. um, because it, the characters evolve. And there's only two of them. Yeah. <laughs> uh, two consistent ones. Though there are some other characters. Minor that, characters, yeah. That are either referred to or because he jumps back into or around some similar situations that we... We see the same people. Sometimes. Yeah. So I saw that episode and I was like, I need to see more. My parents obviously knew what Quantum Leap was, kind of gave me the the rundown and things. And they're like, yeah, yeah, it's a good show. But it wasn't one we owned on DVD. It wasn't one we had videotape recordings of. It was just, oh, it happened to be uh, rerunning on TV. So I would just watch the episodes. Of course, they never played them in any real order, so that kind of ruined the mystique of it. But mm-hmm. eventually, I bought them on DVD, watched them from start to finish several times. We've watched them two, three times, and yeah, it is just a show that is... You say sci-fi? Sci-fi is definitely present, but it is more of a... It's a drama? Yeah. Drama, um, I guess. It's one of those hard to define genre shows because it does. It, has, it depends the episode. It depends the episode. Of course, sci fi fa- is ever present. Yeah, it has a solid foundation of sci fi. Like, you, you can't really ignore the fact that he is time traveling for the whole episode. Mm. Uh, but there are a lot of times where you f- do forget. Like, you're like, it's just Sam. He's and just he's just killer. doing this. And then Al comes in, and then you're reminded, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I love it. It is one of my favorite shows. Although I downplay the sci fi thing, it, it is very present. It uses science fiction for what it's best for, which is exploring the human condition you know, relevant topics, whether they be things that relate to now or the past. And they use the, and with time travel, they're using elements of time travel to have a social commentary about where we're yes. at at the current time and where we were back then and warning us of do not be like this again or we have so much ahead of us uh, because the show is optimistic yeah. yet tragic. A lot of the storylines are Sam in one way or another trying to prevent history from repeating or putting per- it right. Yeah, or perpetuating negative situations in one way or another. And there are a lot of fun other elements that they bring in for particular episodes, which are essentially gimmicks. Oh, but, yeah. Um, well, it starts... I don't mind a lot of them. 
It starts out with the gimmick kind of thing, or, or at least the setup is Sam Beckett is an egotistical scientist who genius playboy, scientist. you know, experiment who, goes wrong because and of his there's ego, a disaster, and he's stuck forever in time. And the gimmick at the start is he cannot remember who he is, and his good friend Al, who is overseeing the project, is the only one who can speak to him, but he can't tell him his information because he's not allowed to or screw up things and you know even al gets away with yeah. telling him his name his or stuff like that Swiss cheesed brain his Swiss cheesed brain and then eventually you know uh sam never truly by the end of it i don't think fully learns who he fully was because there's mysteries and revelations even in the final moments of the show that he's still stunned by because he didn't know that about himself and i like that but there does come a point where that element of the show is in played as heavy it's kind of like yeah. sam has come into his own he's basically a new sam because yeah. the sam we meet in the intro episode is nothing like the sam we mm-hmm. get by the end of the show yeah. and that's character growth of course but the fact of the matter is he is a blank slate he is the audience because we need someone to be confused and un- he, he's the audience point of view character at the beginning and then we've become so comfortable with how this all works just as sam does he is the perfect vessel for us to be in this ride and because he becomes comfortable he, he gets a groove with all this stuff he understands the format yeah. we understand the format and he's such a nice guy scott Bakula is like the nicest guy we keep mentioning yeah. scott because he's I, great I, he's so nice <laughs> um, it, yeah it's just fun to see him be so playful as well like the actor brings that to the character as well as the character naturally being like that. yeah and the script i know it was great for me because i of course growing up with star trek i of course knew scott Bakula before with star trek enterprise and jonathan archer is a character that He's not my favorite, but I've grown to like. But Scott Bakula is more of a jerk in comparison in that he's more of a hard ass. He's more of a, of a, you know, temp. His temperament is very different. So seeing him, seeing him in this, it really sh- showed me what range he has. And then I've seen him in other stuff, and I'm like, oh no, he's mainly a guy who he can really nail down goofy, lovable, nice guy mm-hmm. more so than Jonathan Archer. Um, Jonathan Archer seems more of a, an exception to the rule when it comes to Scott Bakula's um, mm-hmm. preferred characters. Like, he usually plays nice people. Jonathan Archer's nice, don't get me wrong, but, you know, he's a bit he of a dick. He has a dog. He has a dog. <laughs> he, 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 he likes jelly and he rubs it all over his body, you know, and, <laughs> and that's what he likes. Jonathan Archer, that great captain, that great character, but yeah. Scott Bakula. But, uh, such a champ. Such a champ. Like, we weren't that far through watching it uh, when he appeared on the Colbert Report. Yeah, yeah, doing the fixing the Trump thing. Yeah. Because, of course, with this being time travel show, it allows them to have these options of having celebrity, you know, like okay. influencing influential people or celebrities or people of note and... So That's he, wonderful. He interacts with Stephen ver- King, various celebrities, often accidentally placing them on their path. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So that that does also include Buddy Holly, mm. uh, which I think is my favorite because the whole episode that he's been there. That, yeah, there's just a kid called Buddy trying to write a song called Piggy Sue. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah. um, like, Sam thinks, he's just like, why aren't I leaping? I fixed everything. And he says, why don't you? He's like. Oh, it should be Peggy. Yeah. Just cool. And that was it. It's like with. Steve- <laughs> and then, bam. The Stephen King one where it's like a little kid called Steve. Stevie, yeah. Throughout the whole episode was wonderful, and that episode's crazy though. That's a oh. that's a wacko episode. The Halloweeny one. That that's- one. That one goes for it. Trump uh, obviously mentioned. Yes. JFK uh, stuff is. Yeah. Prevalent. Michael Jackson as well. Little Michael Jackson. Yeah. 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 Uh, Marilyn Monroe. Uh, the uh, Chubby Checker. 
I want to say, yeah. is one, right? He uh, does. Is that is Chubby Checker the one who, yeah, do the twist? And he shows him how to do the twist. Yeah. Uh, yeah, 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 um, yeah. He did a big Back to the Future. Bill Clinton? Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, he's, you know, his own self. Yeah, El- Elvis Presley. Of course, that's well, a classic one. Uh, Lee Harvey Oswald. Oh, he gets a leap into Lee. That's, um, that's a killer episode, a triple episode and of a TV and movie. One of my favorites, Dr. Ruth. Oh, Dr. Ruth one's crazy. So, so with this show, what was it about it that made you fall in love with it? Was it my influence of you knew? I was like, oh, I love this show. Was that a huge influence or was well, like, what no. about the show's mystique works on you? Um, usually, if you like something, it works counter to me liking it for a while because I'm judging it extra harshly because I know that it takes quite a bit for you to really like a show and to really push it on me um on those at those earlier stages in our mm-hmm, relationship mm-hmm. yeah 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 um i but- hold i hold back from the weird shit until you're already dating me for quite some time um no you didn't <laughs> um you did not wait long enough to suggest league of gentlemen we'll talk about league one day <laughs> <laughs> that was, um, yeah, I, I, I didn't go for that one. Uh, I like Quantum Leap because I do like a good sci-fi. I like history in general, and I like the way that Quantum Leap plays with the history mm. of things um, and the important, identifying the importance of, of little moments as well as big moments in history as having Mm. the potential to really shift and change the direction of things. Like Mm. the one that I really think of when it comes down to that is that in their original universe, Jackie Kennedy also died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was... I love... With Quantum Leap being a time travel show, you say, oh, time travel show, you're thinking, oh, it's going to be like Doctor Who, where they he beams in and, oh, here's the Aztecs, or he beams over there and, oh, there's Hitler, I can kill him and all that. When yeah. this show is more prioritizing about the, yeah, you get the big ones like Marilyn Monroe, but it's more often than not about the small little things in life, like... And Sam Beckett, everyday does, people as well. Yeah, Sam Beckett will will leap in and oh no, this kid got kidnapped in the original timeline, and Sam Beckett's got to do something about it. He's got to find out why the kid would run away in the first place, and uh, and and little things, little moments like that. And of course, there's odd situations, but mm-hmm. that he's chucked into. But it's it's little touches or or the uncomfortable ones where. The pitch is, oh, Sam Beckett leaps into a black man in the South. Oh, boy. And you just know it's going to be rough. (laughs) You know, it's not going to be an easy time. It really doesn't shy away from heavy subject matter. and It embraces it. (laughs) It really does. And even looking back on it, it deals with everything with such care. Mm. Um, and because it is truly coming from a place where equity and equality is what they are striving for. Mm-hmm. So it, it doesn't age poorly in that way because it's not, mm. it's addressing specific moments in our history mm. and going like, this was not okay. We should be like this. Yeah. Uh, and, Sam is somewhat separated. Uh, because he has no, you know, history with any of the history. Yeah. He is completely But also he, he's coming from a projected future of 1999. <laughs> is it 1999? I can't remember if it's that far. But yeah, yeah. it's, it's um, in the 90s. You, yeah. yeah, is when he's like, he's traveled from and it's meant to be like this utopia. <laughs> Well, it's definitely not Utopia, but definitely no. a sci-fi crazy land where sci-fi owl cr- exists. Yeah, sci-fi crazy land, but like we've 
um, overcome a lot more barriers yeah. in the, the quest for social justice mm-hmm. than we have in our present. Oh, yeah. I, I agree. I think uh, one of the the beautiful things is, you know, look, they approach these topics and some of the ways they approach these topics and some of the aspects of the show are dated, for sure. Yeah. Not just production, but writing stuff and some choices mm-hmm. you wouldn't make today. No. But what keeps it timeless is the sentiment that is behind those choices. You may look at a choice in an episode of like, oh, would this be done today? No, it wouldn't. But the sentiment is always very honest and always very uh, trying to find the good in a situation. And that is what keeps it timeless. Same with the original series Star Trek, where, look, there are some racist elements and sexist elements and homophobic elements and all these problematic elements. But you look at that original 60s Star Trek, you know the, the, the sentiment, the heart was in the right place. And by today's standards, not necessarily aged well, but by the, t- mm-hmm. but the, the at that time standards, it was very progressive. And you have yeah. to, uh, you know, think of it in context. And Quantum Leap has elements like that. Al, Al as a character, is on purposely oh designed to yeah. be a crass, no-nonsense character. But... The, there's a sentimentality to the show that some people might find overwhelming, but in a time in which, you know, here we are in 2020, and I can't think of many shows with as open of a heart like uh-huh. Quantum Leap did back then. There's, of course, mm-hmm. there is, but this show just it wears its heart on its sleeve while not being afraid to yeah. touch the sensitive topics it's not afraid to get into topics about rape or afraid to get into stuff about race or afraid to get into stuff about gender and sexuality it's it's not afraid to go there but it's still a very sweet natured sentimental show but it will make you cry it will make you angry it will do all of those things and that's one of the powerful things about the show it's heartwarming without being just fluffy Mm. which is a really hard balance to strike Mm -hmm. but I think overall Quantum Leap really hits that for me so it is that sweet spot for me where it makes me feel good but it also makes me think yeah and I, as a sci-fi fan, I appreciate the different take on the genre that Quantum Leap uh, is doing. I'm I'm sure it's not an original thing, but I have not really seen time travel approached in the way that Quantum Leap does. And Quantum Leap, they very smartly, they have internal logic and rules to the show that, look, sometimes they're not consistent. They're, they're, look, it's from the late 80s. Consistency yeah. is not a thing you're necessarily going to expect, but there is rules to it, you know, the travel within your own lifetime, and you assume someone's personality, and, you know, Al's the only person that he, you know, that can that he can talk to, and he's the yeah. only one that can see Al, except for animals and children and all of these kind of things, right? Yeah. There's all these internal rules, all of these restrictions... Mm. But these restrictions help format the show. Yeah. These are pillars of the show. And I love those pillars. I love those restrictions. I love those yeah. rules because it makes the show unique. It makes the show have to operate in a way that other time travel shows like Doctor Who don't. Which, no shade on Doctor Who, but this show is restricting itself on purpose and it works. Okay, so why does that not end up feeling like it's repetitive? For some, it will. The thing that makes it non-repetitive is the characters are just that fascinating to watch. The situations, more often than not, are confronting, and it will hook you in on just the pure basis of uh, wanting to see something dramatic. Uh, and they switch it up every now and then by breaking those rules, but they don't do that 
all the time. It doesn't feel like how、um, we were talking about, say, Futurama or whatever, where that show eventually became what gimmicks can we use?、Uh, Quantum Leap eventually nearly got to that point. Like、yeah. season five had a few too many gimmicks, but overall. The show didn't fall into that pitfall, so it's refreshing when oh now it's、uh, now it's Al that's quantum leaping, or、yeah. oh this episode Sam doesn't know who he is because he's in someone with multiple personalities, or they're crazy, or he got electroshocked, or、mm-hmm. or oh in this one Sam is leaping into Lee Harvey Oswald and he keeps leaping all the they save those for the right time, and they're not always the. Season finale and、yeah. season premiere. Sometimes it just randomly plopped in there. Oh, this one he traveled into his great 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 grandfather or whatever it is,、yeah. and that's what keeps it non-repetitive.、Mm. But mainly, it's just you like the characters. Yeah, you, you just like them enough that you want to spend as much time as you can with those guys. You, at least, I'm saying you because I'm、mm-hmm. I'm projecting.、Me? I'm projecting. <laughs> um. So I find myself as an audience member、uh, being really comforted by the format,、mm. and it is it, it it becomes really exciting when it, they do mix things up, thrilling, and it also there's an excitement that comes with it when they're. Isn't an episode that necessarily changes up the format, but it really goes into reminding you that this isn't our world、mm-hmm. because it's just like everything's true. Aliens exist. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have time travel. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a sci-fi world, but it is touching upon the brutal and or beautiful world that we do live in and we have lived in. It is. Commenting upon those, one of the key strokes to me is、uh, the show does a really great job of constantly. I can't remember if it's the most travelled in decade, but constantly debunking that beautification of the nineteen fifties. Because there's that you know there's that aura about ah the fifties where everything、yeah. was swell and everyone was happy, and same with the sixties.、Mm. Since it's a time travel show, show with social commentary. Is constantly just going back to the fifties and showing us, hey, it wasn't all happy-go-lucky fun times, especially not for people who weren't white at the time.、Yeah. And the show, that is one of the things I love is this show is created by someone who grew up at that time too, and and they have a nostalgia and all that for it. But they're also not afraid as writers, as as creators of the show, to go back to that time of your. You know your innocence and youth, and say, yeah, but it wasn't that for everyone. It was actually、yeah. quite horrible and brutal, and、yeah. I love that aspect of Quantum Leap. Yeah, it's a nice show, very quaint, very、mm. gentle, but it is constantly stripping off the paint of、yeah. nostalgia and of、really、sentimentality of what was a brutal world. It really does a good. Job, uh, deconstructing, uh, different moments in history to give a different approach、mm. or a refreshed perspective. Um, the like one that I often go back to thinking about is the one where he leaps into the African American man, and he's in the diner. Mm, in yeah, the nineteen fifties,、yeah. um, and he's he's being <sighs> harassed, threatened, and told to leave、um, because they're refusing him service. Yeah, and then of course the mystery is why did this guy go in here to cause this problem? It, yeah. Because of course one of the hooks is the mystery of what's happening in the episode、yeah. and what happened before to make this situation happen in the first place. Yeah.、And、oh boy. That. Itself is exploring that idea and the way that, particularly when the show was coming out, that not that long ago these things were happening.、Um, that also the kind of process, I don't know, like heroification、mm. of、uh, protesters that 
happens retrospectively mm. uh where it's just like n- no we don't we don't know really why mm. all of these people did it certain people become like landmark figures like rosa parks mm. where so much investigation is done into why did she do it what was happening who that was day, she and all that yeah who what did she go on to do mm. um but it's just like no this this is just a person mm. and like we don't get to know all of that yeah, I also appreciate, and I reckon if they ever did do the show again, mm-hmm. or revive the show or whatever, this could be something even better explored. One of the things that's minorly explored, and maybe this is me giving it more credit, is to me one of the issues, one of the one of the interesting things is when Sam is in the body of a person of color and he has Al there giving mm-hmm. him encouragement. A lot of the time they kind of deconstruct or kind of prove that that white savior figure attitude is not actually going to be helpful in this. Like, Al gives him that advice of that kind of, well, Al's an old military white guy, Mm -hmm. and he's going to give him that old, like, the white person perspective on this. And Sam being kind of uh, an audience avatar, yes, Sam Beckett is played by a white man, of course, that is relevant but sam like we said is you know he doesn't have a you know he doesn't have this baggage baggage, he is kind of more of a neutral perspective or detached perspective there are so many occasions in which uh owl's bigotry owl's uh complex is debunked within the episode And that is what I like. And it doesn't just go to race, it of course goes to gender and sexuality and mm. so many other avenues. But I love the fact that the show will, in its own way, kind of deconstruct that white savior, white privileged attitude more often than not. And by today's standards, maybe it doesn't seem as impressive or doesn't seem as subversive or in your face, or it could be done more or better, but it is there if you if you want to see it. At least that's how I approach the show. Yeah, and it is really powerful seeing how many times, like, obviously, it's not every time this show is not perfect, but a lot of the time when Sam is really actually trying to figure out a situation, he turns to the people around him Mm, mm. and it shows the power of giving voice and prioritizing the narratives of those people who are actually there and involved Mm. and getting their perspective on the problem. Uh, Yeah, and Sam Beckett, the man, the character we meet and are in the journey with, is a deeply empathetic person, and he completely empathizes with the person he's inhabiting. And since we don't know the full logical rules of how quantum leaping works, that's a part of the central mystery of, like, why is he leaping, what is this, what's guiding him... What are the full rules? Like, we yeah. don't fully even get to understand, like, where the person goes until much later. And we yeah. don't understand all the rules of the show. And some people might get frustrated with that. We're fine with it because that's not what actually deeply matters unless the episode n- unless the episode is about that in some way, unless the episode delves into that. But for more often than not, it is just Sam leaps in. Yeah. He's here. But in a way, like, we don't fully understand if it's a part of... He kind of understands the person while they while he's in them, mm. and sometimes he gets something from them, like when he's in Jimmy, you know, when he's in Jimmy and he's suffering some of the side effects of Jimmy's condition, or when he, you know, uh, is in people with mental illnesses and stuff. He kind of has that, like when he's in the episode where he plays, where he's in the body of a woman who has been raped. Mm. Sam Beckett doesn't know that's what happened for a fact. But he feels it yeah. because he's in this woman's body. He is this woman. But he, the show... The he sh- feels the trauma of the people. Exactly. He feels 
things and he gets some aspects of them even though the show doesn't necessarily lay that out as like you don't have i i don't remember there's that episode where they sit down and say okay here's the rules sam blah blah, blah. they tell you the rules but those little things they kind of just bleed into episodes and you might call them inconsistencies for the episode and that is 100 percent fair because sometimes they are but Mm -hmm. more often than not it is just a way of making sam a better person a a more interesting a more understandable character and and it also is it just appeals to kind of the the central idea of the show is walking a mile in somebody else's shoes and a part of that empathy is learning from and experiencing as them so mm. it makes sense that at various points uh that idea kind of makes them go like yeah we'll push this a little bit more this episode yeah okay now this might be me just being a nostalgic person and being blind to current television but why don't we have more shows like this today especially in a time in which we're more social like more conscious of social aspects of like inequality why don't we have a show like this that is tackling all of these subjects head on? We are talking like on our main feed about Star Trek Discovery and Star Trek Discovery, like Star Trek, are tackling these big issues, but more in a that's the subtext kind of way. Yeah. You get what we're getting at. Quantum Leap doesn't pussyfoot around. No. This episode's about rape. This one's about homophobia. Mm-hmm. This one's about racism. And it delves into those head on. Why don't we have more? Like, why don't we have a show like Quantum Leap right now? Or am I just I think... not seeing it? We have more, like, specialty shows. Like, oh, this one is a, the gay drama yeah. show. This one's this. But That's what I, w- I was going to say. That there are... Um, I think there are a few things at play. But the first one that came to my mind was that categorization and division within television it feels like it's much more prominent Mm. so it's just like you have this program that is for this group this Mm. program is for this group but quantum leap it doesn't do that as much like because it was a mainstream for everyone type of show like that was want to label it prime time anything it's family because there's Mm. stuff for kids stuff for teenagers and stuff for adults i agree i just i just wish there was another and maybe i'm just missing it but i wish there was a sci-fi show that was blatantly tackling these issues like a part of me is sick of subtext being so I wish it was more text in the way that Quantum Leap isn't afraid mm-hmm. to do it, and Star Trek in the past hasn't been as afraid to do it uh, to do it or uh, as fully explored. Because modern Star Trek is a bit less subtext about it, more text, but mm. they don't fully focus on it in the way that I would want it to. And um, this show, when we sit down to watch it. You know, we go, okay, so this ep- we're not going to sit down and go, oh, we're going to have a brilliantly fun time. When you sit down to watch Quantum Leap, it kind of, if you don't know the episode order or whatever, mm-hmm. or you don't choose specific episodes, you, you know there's the gamble of you're going to be confronted. You are going yeah. to be in a state of thought and or emotional reaction to it. It isn't just, oh, I'm sitting down to watch that fun show where Scott mm-hmm. Bakula does kicks. And he takes his shirt off. Like, you get that too. But when you sit down and go, okay, we're going to watch Quantum Leap, what you're actually saying is, I'm going to sit down and watch a show about racism. Like, actually about racism or actually about homophobia or actually about this. Yep. I I don't know. I kind of just... I would love for Quantum Leap to come back, but we'll leave that discussion for for a bit later. Let's talk about Al. Al. Al, for me, is the heart of the show. Sam is definitely the heart of the show, but Al is one of my favorite characters in fiction. All time. Mm-hmm. I love Al. I love Dean Stockwell. i never seen Dean Stockwell in anything that I recognized before Quantum Leap, and I've gone through his back catalog a few times. I haven't seen a lot of his stuff, but what I have seen 
He impresses me. Mm-hmm. Dean Stockwell is a magnificent actor. Wish he got more stuff to do in his career that that was a bit bigger of note. Loved him in Battlestar Galactica. Don't think I didn't notice him in that. And even his appearance in Enterprise was fun. But I love Dean Stockwell, and he is the heart of the show for me because Al, Al is a complex character because you think he's just one thing. Mm. You think that he's the, you know, the devil on his shoulder who's actually an angel because Al is a good person. You know this, but he is blasé. He's rude. He's crude. He's smoking cigars. He comes in drunk sometimes. He's, he's a gross pig. He says things that are morally confronting to Sam, but those in fact make Sam think. He is disgusting. But you yeah. know, he's a good person. And they really do play up in, in an interesting way to me. Um, that on the face of him, he looks like mm, you, you give him a misogyny vibe. He is a misogynist. That's the um, point. He yeah. is an open misogynist, I, and he really is. Um, but he's a but feminist too. He is a feminist, and he's also, uh, like oh, I'm. I'm sure that there's a particular word for this. Um. Uh, but the men who are like, I'm not a misogynist. I love women. I think they're great. The name's Al. <laughs> <laughs> I, because at first you think Al's just that. You think, oh, he's the scumbag with a heart of gold. Yeah. But then the show actually explores that and actually says, what is Al's deal? What makes a person like this? So much depth. Can we humanize him? And can we make him more than a two-dimensional comedy relief character and or exposition dump character? And they do. Al is the sad clown. He is a guy. But what I love about Al's tragedy is time and time and time again, the show says, hey, just because Al was a prisoner of war or just because Al's sister died or just because these tragic things that does not excuse al al has to own up to the fact and he does trauma doesn't excuse bad behavior and that is one of the joys of al is that is constantly reinforced of course we dwell and 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 embrace the trauma because it is sad and they do play it genuinely well but al knows that he uses that trauma as an excuse, but he just can't get over it. And the journey of the show is, you know, him learning and then eventually Sam helping because there's many times where Sam could help and he can't or he won't mm-hmm. because he because it's a time travel show. We can't mess with our own timelines for our own personal gains. We can't do that. And or Sam's actions in the timelines affected Al's actions in the timeline for negative repercussions until the very end of the show. And Al Calavici is... He's stylish. I love the fact that the show never fully gets into why he dresses so extravagantly for what he is, because we see other people in the future, and they dress weird too, but no one dresses as weird as Al, and it's never fully... Because he's eccentric, sure, but he's not that eccentric. (laughs) But he is in a league of his own. He is in a league. He's a military. He's an admiral. And they always remind you as an admiral, but Al is just crazy with fashion. But it never feels like the show made Al an eccentric character. It's just like he's eccentric. Don't get me wrong, but he's not that crazy guy. Like he doesn't act like how he dresses in the Mm -hmm. way where you look at a picture of him and you go, oh, I get that guy's crazy wacky. But then you have some really emotional stuff with him where Dean Stockwell is so good that he can make you buy a scene in which he is nearly in tears, yet he's wearing like a fluoro vest with Mm -hmm. glowing buttons all over it and these 3D glasses and, and, you know, a fucking daffodil in his lapel and all that kind of stuff he is such a talented actor that you can look past the clothes and see the man yeah he got 
nominated for, I think it was like four Golden Globes. Or Emmys and stuff. Yeah, yeah he got nominated for Emmys as well. But How like, Scott Bakula never won an Emmy uh, for, for, for Quantum Leap is a fucking yeah. mystery to me. But it's just like for pretty much every season. They got nominated for awards and didn't get nothing. Yeah. That, <laughs> that is... That too, but I mean that, that, that Al was recognised as being such a great performance by Dean. <sighs> yeah, and Al is the the heart because, I don't know, man. He And I love um, just to talk about some favourite episodes or moments. One of my favourites, of course, is when Al becomes the Leaper, when he swaps places with Sam mm. and it demonstrates that Sam is the perfect person for this because yes. Dean Stockwell, a.k.a. Al, is too hot-headed. He's a good person, but he is quick to emotional responses and that leads you astray. Mm-hmm. And I love that. I love that. I love that they gave you something you didn't think about, which is, well, why is Sam... It's asking the question... Why is it Sam? Why, why does it is have Sam, to be Sam? Why is Sam the what one who has to do this? What is special about him that makes him unique? And we're only like four, se- three, four three five. seasons in. We've what, probably got like 80 episodes in or whatever, however ludicrous mm-hmm. amount. And we're no longer asking that question. But the show wants to ask that question. It needs yeah. to ask that question. And the fact that it does in that way where it demonstrates to you this is why Sam is. <laughs> he is someone you know, you like, you respect as an audience member. You know is a military guy. You know is someone who could be someone who could leap. But he's why they can't. And he and it reminds you why Sam, Sam can. Not only Sam, why they can't, but why they shouldn't. Why they shouldn't. Uh, at least for that time, because there was... A plan for Al, <laughs> for him to be a leaper. But uh, that is one of my favorite episodes. Just the chills that I got when when it's revealed that they've swapped places. My God, that was exciting. What are some episodes to you that stand out? Ones that you really enjoy? I I really do enjoy or appreciate because enjoy may be a strong word for yeah. some. Oh yeah. Um. I. I enjoy the one where he goes back to his childhood like he's he, himself as a child yeah as and, a teenager yeah and he's trying to stop his dad from dying, dying from a heart attack yeah <laughs> and because he just so desperately wants to have more time with his dad who's just him an old man makeup <laughs> yeah that's fun and uh, fat uh him running through the cornfields and of if course it's corn yeah, yeah, and it relates to also then that's a double part because the yeah. other one's about his brother who died yeah. in Vietnam. Yeah, he leaps into his brother to save him. No, no, he leaps into the- one of his brother's colleagues yeah. or whatever to save him, Yeah, which is cute um, and sad. Oh, so sad. I-, I do feel like we would be remiss if we didn't acknowledge how much of this show is influenced by the Vietnam War and being in the wake of Vietnam. Because that is part of of why the show has the attitude that it does. And its major core thing about uh, Al's character was he's a Vietnam vet. He served, Mm -hmm. he fought, he was a prisoner of war. Mm -hmm. And he lost everything because of it. Yeah. And here he is today. Sure, he's an admiral or whatever, but at what cost? And yeah, that double parter is a particularly good one because it's a Superman thing. Mm-hmm. Remember in the mo- movie Man of Steel when Pa Kent died because of a cyclone or whatever? And it was really stupid because you're going, well, Superman, save him. Yeah. Oh, no, Clark, don't save me because I'm stoic. I'm, I'm you know, I'm Kevin Costner. When in the comics... Pa Kent dies because of heart attack or some natural cause, and it's a complex because Superman thinks, I wish I could save him, but it's something he couldn't save him from. This is that. Sam Beckett, brilliant genius he is, he can't save his dad from a heart attack that's going to happen down the road because 
you know, he's not going to change. He's just like, oh, whatever, I'll, I'll be fine. And his dad is just that old stoic kind of guy. That's not going to work. You can't save him from that. No, like It's you not can't like pushing him out of the way him... of a bullet. It's not like saving his brother in the Vietnam War. You can't make him slow down. And at that time, they just didn't have the same understandings of things that impact mm. your health. And also, a part of the benefit, too, is Sam Beckett's dad is a farmer. He's just an old country guy who's just like, I don't care, like, I'm fine. He's stoic. He's that mm. kind of, he's a rural American guy, you know? And that is a key factor as well. I would be very much remiss if I did not say what my favorite episode is. We've already said it. Jimmy. Which one? The first one. But the second one's great, too. But Jimmy. Yeah. Jimmy. It's one where Al finally becomes this fully human character that we can relate to because we get his sister, the story about his sister, and that's Trudy, and it's very sad. And it's probably Dean Stockwell's best performance in the whole show. Mm. That monologue, that, 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 that back and forth. But that episode... People meme it because it has the, you know, Al, I mean, it has Sam being like, I'm retarded or whatever in the mirror and people have made fun of it. But yeah. that episode is emotionally devastating. It is very well written. It has an antagonistic force in the, in the, in the wife, but you completely understand where she's coming from. Unlike most antagonists yeah. in the episodes where you go, oh, they're an asshole. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the few times in the show where. Uh, and this isn't a criticism of the show, but mm -hmm. just how this is a praising of this episode is you really don't want to leave those characters behind. They okay. are so real to me. Jimmy's brother, I completely buy him. I love that guy. Wish he was my brother. Mm -hmm. He's such a good guy, but he, you know, he's dealing with a very complex situation. And one of the beauties yeah. of that episode is, sure, it's set in the past, but if it was set in the modern day, that would still be an issue. Jim, mm -hmm. You know, the, 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 the issues one would face of having a loved one in their life that they have to take care of with an illness like that or, or you know, a syndrome like that. And all the stuff, that's what was tiny. That episode's kind of timeless. Yeah, mm -hmm. sure, they use the dreaded R word, but... That episode mm -hmm. is dealing with issues that could have been set in the modern day because that's how yeah. good of a story this was to tell. And they put it back in the day because it's a time travel show, but it is just it one gives, of those stories. It, and it gives a bit of distance for the audience. Um, but I also just want to credit that, obviously, Sam, we, we see Sam in the place of these people. Uh, but in every episode, they actually get an actor or an actress mm. to represent. Be the reflection, yeah. Yeah, and be the reflection. Like, when he's Jimmy, it's actually an actor mm. with Down syndrome. Who I swear I've seen in other stuff before, yeah. too. And it's just like, that today is still a big deal. And Scott Bakula gives it's one of his best performances too because he does mm -hmm. a very delicate job of playing Sam Beckett as in the body of someone with Down syndrome, but he doesn't go full. Like, he doesn't go over the line. He no. plays it just enough. And a part of the issue is Sam Beckett, the person, is so frustrated with, with the body, the, with the limitations, and, and, and the way, and the like way he, people treat him, yeah, and the way people treat him, because he knows, as someone who's you know able-bodied, mm. he knows that he can do this, but he's in someone who can't do that in the way that he can, and he's experiencing it firsthand, and and the the, you know, the people being supportive, but he doesn't need that, and you you. You just get it. Yeah. Um, it puts you in the headspace and the viewpoint mm. of a perspective that we rarely think about or rarely see represented in television, especially mm. television back then, usually a disabled character. We're seeing it from the point of view of the family that are looking yeah. after him, but this is putting us in Jimmy's perspective. It's Jimmy. And it's not that Jimmy needs to be saved mm. either it's that 
Other be, people need to change around Jimmy. He needs to be understood. And which is really revolutionary thinking about the context of this show being the late 80s, early 90s, that they are advocating for the social model of disability. It's a great episode. I It brings me to tears. Uh, Dean and Scott give career best performances in that episode. It's well written. You believe all the secondary characters and you miss them and they feel live. It is, again, not a harsh critique of the show, just how well this episode is written. It feels lived in. That episode in particular feels really lived in. Like you could imagine the characters before and after this episode had happened. And you uh, just imagine their interactions and how they that lived. Applies to pretty much every single person that they interact with, not just Jimmy, his brother, and the wife. The kid as well. The and kid Michael as well. Michael Madsen at the docks and the neighbors. The as neighbors. Well. Like it is just a fully it's everybody lived in episode and it is a joy to behold that episode. And of course we come back to Jimmy and that's a great episode too, because they're introducing what evil leapers are, and that's fun and silly, but it is so refreshing that we get to see Jimmy again, and then we get to see him in the uh, final episode as well, and that's nice. And it's as if the show itself not only understood it's his best episode or one of them, but understood or fell in love with those people as well. It's like the show understood we, the audience, fell in love with Jimmy yeah. and fell in love with the family. They themselves, the show, fell in love with those people and they wanted to bring them back in some way. And that's mm -hmm. kind of sweet because this show is kind of hard in a way because here's the pitch. Every week you're going to have a new set of characters that will only exist in that one episode and then they're gone. And for some people that might be a little too ah annoying because you want to be with your set of characters and this only has al and sam two people who cannot physically interact and one of which knows the other one and the other doesn't know them as fully and and it's a hard sell but the writing and the performances are just and then and the hook of the show is just that good what are things that uh don't work about the show we've been very high praising of it but what are weaknesses or or episodes that stand out to you or things that you just don't like about the show there are some episodes that just end up kind of falling down because you compare them to other ones that do mm, a very similar exploration yeah because they do rehash p plot lines and experiences and you end up going well okay you did it better before or or like, oh, actually, like this one brings something new and adds a layer of depth. Or now nah, this one just kind of trumps the last one. So like the last one kind of feels cancelled out. Or there are just some episodes that are just plain gimmick and goofy. Ooh. Some really bizarre choice ones that are like, yeah. oh, okay. And some for me that are just so generic story of the week kind of thing but and they're using it as a framing device for some fun play but mm -hmm. at the end of the day you're supposed to care about oh, no the drama that you'd see on something very vanilla mm -hmm. and you're like this is quantum leap people i need the stakes to be a little bit more intense than this other than like oh no the kids are gonna kid you know like i don't know it's but unlike star trek Unlike Futurama, unlike Sherlock and Doctor Who and that, I, and this may be, may be my bias, but I do not think there's an episode of Quantum Leap that's so terrible or so poor that I would say it's bad. There are weak episodes, but there's not there ones, ones that I would skip or not ones that I would say are truly abhorrent, such as I would with Star Trek, such as I would with Futurama, mm -hmm. Doctor Who, Sherlock, all these other great shows. Quantum Leap, to me, maybe my bias, doesn't have an episode I point to and go, now that episode is fucking unwatchable or terrible. Yeah. They're bad ones, but they're so enjoyable mm. and in in their in their lackluster nature more often than not but for me there is no 
really bad episode of Quantum Leap. They're all no. pretty good. Yeah. Like, for me, like we kind of touched on before, even the weaker episodes are bearable because the characters are so strong. It's not like when you get a bad plot, the characterization falls down as well. Mm. It's still enjoyable to watch Sam and Al tackle the problem and interact and face a situation and to see how it plays out, even if you know from that first oh boy the beats oh boy. that are gonna happen. Because it it does become really familiar mm-hmm. when you can tell that like, oh yeah, okay, this is just gonna be a basic episode and it's gonna hit these beats. When is he gonna take his shirt off and do a spin kick? Yeah. yeah. You know, that go that old question, when's Scott Bakula gonna take his shirt off? When's he gonna show that he can sing and play piano? Mm-hmm. That's quantum leaf. The worst episode of the show to me is the vampire one, and that is also <laughs> the best episode because there's Dick from Twin Peaks in it for a yeah. start, and it is like vampires are real, bitch. Yeah. Bye. Just, just cause it can be. I, yeah, Quantum Leap is just an inspirational show. It is a show that, y- you know, it is just, it's nice. And some people may not like a show that's nice, but as we've said many times, it's confronting, it tackles all these hard subjects, but when I think about it, I think, what a nice show. Mm -hmm. What a sweet-natured show. The one thing that I don't like about Quantum Leap, Mm. and I still, like, I don't hate it, I just wish that it wasn't this, is the ending. Okay, let's get into it. Quantum Leap got cancelled or not renewed, so they made an ending that was one of those, ah, we may not get another, but we've been told we might, so we're going to go all out on this. And I love the final episode because it is Quantum Leap's equivalent of the Twin Peaks final episode, where it is so... From season two. From season, yeah. Of Twin Peaks. Where it's Uh, so, like, fucking crazy and cerebral and abstract and bizarre. the wall. Well, I ask you this. What do you think it is that is guiding Sam? Do you think he... I think it's God. And do you think Sam's an angel? Because that's kind of what the feel is. I, I he's a guardian angel in a way. God's, yeah, I think he's an that angel because he's one of God's. God has made him do these. The he's yeah. a foot soldier of God in a way. Yeah, I I think that he is effectively becoming, become, and being forced into the role of a, a guardian angel. I agree. Um, I feel like I would like it. So so much more if he made it home. But the fact mm. that the title card says that he never makes it home. The title card that's spelt incorrectly. Oh. That is the biggest fucking mistake of my... I've, but that final episode in itself, wonderful. It is so cerebral. It is bizarre. Bruce McGill gives a great performance as as Sam the as Al the bar is it Al uh, yeah Al the bartender I want to say, and Bruce McGill was one of the first people we meet when Al, uh, when Sam first leapt. Yeah. He was the guy at the hangar bay, so that's a nice piece of casting. We see a lot of old school characters like Jimmy, like uh, yeah, we what see was, a lot of face familiar faces what was, from across the series. Like, in that episode. Uh, I'm forgetting his name. Was it Captain Proton or something? Oh no no, the the yeah he's he's his idol Sam's idol the old TV kids TV show host guy he was there played by Richard Hurd who's Tom Paris's dad uh, in Voyager. I love the bizarre nature of the episode. You know it's so well shot and well realized, and yet it leaves you so cold and perplexed and wanting more which is exactly what i want from that episode the big thing in that episode though is sam now can control his leaps that's where we're left Mm -hmm. off with is like you've been the one that's been in control of your leaps the whole time is the big revelation you're actually capable of deciding 
And the first thing Sam does is put right what once went wrong, which is the big thing of Al's marriage. Al being a prisoner of war. And they go back to that episode where, where Sam was trying, where Al was forcing Sam to try and connect with his wife to stop her. And yeah, he didn't do it because it wasn't right. He can't do this. We need stop, to do to stop her from remarrying, from re- remarrying, and le- letting her know that Al was alive because and that he's going to come back. That that he'll he'll make it back to her. She just has to wait a little bit longer. And also in that scene, it's implied at least that he is Sam Beckett standing there talking to her. He isn't someone else, mm. which is a big thing in itself, and it opens up. A whole, a whole galaxy worth of ideas to explore, and what does this all mean? And and he's altered time. Sam has altered the time, and now what does that imply? What does this all add up to? What's going to happen? And then you get the title card of Hey, Al got everything he wanted, but Sam Beckett never returned home. Yeah, like dot it, dot dot. Like it's a, it's a trade off that that because he he gave Al the happy ending mm. he he doesn't get it um like it's the ultimate sacrifice because sam is such a good person that he that will never stop being good no and he will not put his own happiness before al um but also a part of that as an audience member is just being like but Sam doesn't know what he's missing exactly. Well, he has a wife. He has a wife and a kid. Oh, does he have a kid? I don't know if we well, no, know that. Um, I think she we... she was conceived during one of the leaps. That's right. And that's she's right. a physicist. Physicist? I can't remember. But uh, she's she's a scientist that's also on the team. I don't remember that off the top of my brain, but I remember he has the wife. I but I, that ending does leave you f- like, what the fuck? It's so you want frustrating. So much from it, but Bruce McGill nails it in that mm. performance where he he's cryptic, but he kind of like, you, you know, you know, I'm God, right? Nuance, you know, yeah, and <sighs> you just want more quantum it, leap. It would just be like if you just said, "Well, I'm God," it wouldn't fit in the show. No, it, it but yeah, it's a show. Sat- yeah, it's a show with vampires and aliens and mummies. <laughs> it wouldn't so feel fuck satisfying it. as much. <sighs> I, it, it's just there was so much potential because it would be like, well, if you're just going to say that you're outright God, why have you made him go on all of this journey? If because you're just he's gonna, God. If you're just going to do this, because he's, he's not, earned it, he's not shown to be like, oh yeah, I'm just fucking with you, kind of God. No, he's. I've. This is where you need to be, kind of God. Yeah. There's so many avenues that they were going to go down. Sam Beckett leaping into the future. Baby. Sam Beckett leaping baby into a baby. Sam. But the most important one was the season after was going to explore Al becoming uh, a leaper himself. And that's how they were going to bring Sam home was yeah. them combining and coming back together. Yeah. Which would have been perfect with the show's message of working together mm-hmm. because that's a huge part of their dynamic is they work the best together when they're actually working yeah. together because they are deep friends and respecting each other as colleagues. They're deeply and connected, but also um, they, and- they come to acknowledge how they balance each other out, particularly in terms of their blind spots. Yeah, and Al, at that point, it would have been narratively interesting, too, because he knows Sam saved him Yeah, in a way. And, and there's an extra level of debt there. Yeah. And of, like, y- you gave this to me. I want to give you your life back. I wish we got more of it. And... Uh, so many the creator, times. the creator of the show, um, uh, is it Donald P or Donald B. Belsario? He is a gigantic titan of TV. Magnum oh. PI, JAG, NCIS, and out of all the things he's done, just that's, that's just to name a couple. He has always said Quantum Leap's his favorite and the one where he put the most work in as an artist. And boy, does it show! Mm-hmm. I agree, it is the guy's crowning achievement, and. He's still around, at last I checked, and so's Dean, and so's Scott Bakula. It, it's always within reach. 
bridge. That's part of what makes it frustrating Mm. is that up until this point, it's always within reach that they could do it. And Dean Stockwell, I think, has retired, retired from acting, but he said that he, last I checked, he had said that he would come back for a quantum leap. And I want them... Out of all the shows that are being brought back and revived and all of this stuff and redone, why not Quantum Leap? Ideally, you would like a conclusion. You'd like a season, a mini series, or something in which TV movie, even a TV movie. I would would want to. I would want. I would no. I think we've waited long enough. I would want a mini series. I I would want six episodes on Netflix. I want to see Sam get home. You want so bad. I've always said this to you. It should have the title card open up the episode, (laughs) the series being like, and Doctor Sam Beckett never made it home. Dot dot dot. Until Until now, and then this is the journey of him coming back home. Home, I would love it. Ideally, you want Dean Stockwell. You yeah. you want Scott Bakula. Mm-hmm. You want Donald B. Pelisario to be at the helm of this. You want all the the elements that are still with us. I don't want. No. P- personally, I would still like if we got a new Quantum Leap in which you you did it with the same kind of gimmick. Don't make it Sam Beckett and no. Al again. Do a different dynamic. Do a different thing. But. Mm-hmm. The idea, the mechanics of the show are ripe with potential, and you could explore so much with that mechanic, but ideally, I want to see Sam Beckett get home. I want to see a conclusion to these characters, but as time marches on, as we get further and further, the likelihood of it is really narrowing down because of... Dean Stockwell is so old, and Scott Bakula is in multiple projects, and you know Donald is working on NCIS and all these things, and I think the world needs Quantum Leap. When Star Trek Discovery happened and Star Trek Picard happened, the show creators and the actors and all that were like, the world needs Star Trek right now, because Trump happened and all this. Great, whatever. The world actually needs Quantum Leap right now. Quantum Leap yeah. is a show that I think, whether you have it be a conclusion of Sam Beckett's character, or you have it be a new run with, you know, new characters or new dynamics, or they're just going to do, if they're going to be corporate and be like a redo where this actor plays Sam Beckett and this one plays Al, or they do a gender flip version, whatever. Quantum Leap needs to come back. It would be I would watch that on Netflix. I would watch that on Amazon. I would watch that as a show. Twelve episodes. Fuck yeah. It would have all of my money. Um my preference is a handoff situation. So we, we pass in the baton. We get Sam going home and that somebody replaces Sam in the place of the guardian angel. Al's kid. Yeah, Al's kid that wouldn't exist. You know who without should without the project. You know who I, I've always said this. I don't know why. I've always thought I don't know what the ages are, but Bill Hader is Al's kid. Yeah. How good would that be? Yeah. How that's... good would that be? Ooh. I'm just saying, Bill Hader, get him on this project now. I can see him doing it. He has the sass, but he has the dramatic range. I can see it, and I can buy him as our son, even if he's a little too tall, but whatever. Oh, and it, oh, I would love it if they set that up as well, because like, he's been raised knowing about Sam Beckett. But one thing, oh. don't be fucking pussies. Let Al smoke cigars, and if you are going to do a new version... Don't do fucking vaping as the no, substitute. No. I don't want that fucking hipster shit. No. Have him either don't smoke at all or smoke a cigarette or a cigar. No vaping. No. If I see a quantum leap and someone fucking grabs, if they're the owl equivalent and they grab out a fucking vape pen, I'm out, okay? I'm fucking out. If if Sam needs to reduce his stress with a fidget spinner, I'm fucking out, okay? I don't want vape <laughs> pens. I don't want fidget spinners. I want, I want the narration at the start to tell you how the show's going to run brilliant i think that's all we can say about quantum leap it is just a show that it makes you need me to happy. watch it makes you happy while being uh, like we said a a confronting show because although things are tough in the show you know it's going to work out because sam is that reliable of a protagonist that's a safe show <laughs> in that sense in that sense, sense yeah like yeah. it, it 
it's not a safe space kind of show. Yeah. Well, Rachel, a pleasure as always to be talking a television event with you, a show, Quantum Leap, iconic. It gave us our rapping. I think I think we all know that that's what the world needs right now is is Dean Stockwell rapping the alphabet. Oh, that's, that's, that's Boogie Woogie. No, this is rap. I gotta make up words. Let's see. Uh, you're a loony tune in a big white room, and I'm a hologram from the future. I'm moving fast back into the past, and I got to say I'm pleased to meet you. <laughs> you're my man, I'm a fan, you got to understand that you got the power. The right read says, guaranteed, I'm gonna give you what you need. It's a A, B, C, G, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, C, U, V, W, X. Well, you're my man, I'm a fan, you got to understand, you got the power, the right read, sense guaranteed, I'm going to give you what you need.